Hey guys and welcome back to second episode of my e-com journey. So today I want to finally start working on a storefront and I was thinking a lot about what kind of e-commerce system I would want to use and I finally chose a WooCommerce which is open source plugin for WordPress. Since I have a lot of experience with WordPress and PHP, I thought that it would be better to code everything by myself rather than just pay for a Shopify. And I hope that this decision won't catch me later when I want to scale up my e-commerce store. So the first step in the development of a storefront would be to install a WordPress installation into my localhost MacBook environment. So I guess let's start by creating a new project folder. As the next step, I should make sure that I have a MySQL server installed and it's running. If you don't have a MySQL server installed on your MacBook, then make sure to run this command brew install MySQL. And since I have MySQL installed already on my MacBook, I will just run a command that will check that my SQL server is on and running. And I will do that by running the command brew services start MySQL. And it tells me that MySQL already started, which means I'm ready to install a WordPress installation. And to install the WordPress, I should get the installation files. Therefore, I will go to wordpress.org and I will click on get WordPress. And here I will click on uh, download and install and I will download the newest WordPress installation. Then I will copy the content of the WordPress folder and paste it into my uh, new project folder. Next, before we can go to the URL with the WordPress installation, and install by going through the wizard, we need to make sure that we have an Apache server running on our MacBook. If you are not sure that you have an Apache server installed on your MacBook, then you need to install it by running the command brew install httpd. Then after you install your Apache server, you can test that it is running as a service by running the command brew services start httpd. And as you can see, it tells me that HTTPD service is running on my MacBook, which I can test by going to the URL HTTP uh, localhost with the port 8080. And if you go to this URL, you will see my user web root. Then you have to go to the folder etc slash host and open the host file. So I've opened the host file in the Visual Studio Code and here I need to add a localhost domain for my uh, new project. Then I will save the file. Now let's try to visit the localhost domain and see if I will see the WordPress installation wizard. Now it still redirects me to the localhost 8080. All right, as a next step, I think I have to configure Nginx because I essentially use Nginx as a reverse proxy that redirects all the traffic to an Apache server. So let me open the configuration file. And in the engine settings, I will add a new server configuration block. And there I will just add my localhost domain. I will uh, define the path to SS log and to error log as well. And I will tell engine to uh, redirect all the traffic to the folder where I have saved all the WordPress installation files. And Nginx should by default go to the folder and look for index.php or index.html. And then it should process all PHP files with fast CGI server. So let's save the Nginx configuration and try to reload my localhost domain. Oh yeah, I have to restart Nginx service so it can reload all the new changes in the configuration file. And I did that by running the command brew services restart engines. And if I try to visit my localhost domain, it is still showing the my user web root. So let's start httpd as well and see what happens. Nope, no change. All right, guys, so I had to reload the engines configuration file and restart the engines server. And after restarting the server, I could finally load my localhost page. And now I can finally start the installation process. So to start the installation process, I will choose English as my primary language. 
and I will click on continue. Next, I will define all the database configuration parameters such as database name, database password, username, etc. So give me a few minutes. I will have to create a completely new MySQL database right now. All right, Sparky, you've made it through this part of installation. So WordPress can now communicate with your database. If you are ready, time now to run the installation. So uh, let's click run the installation. All right, I'm welcome with welcome page. Welcome to the famous five minutes WordPress installation process. Just fill in the information below and you'll be right on your way to use the most extendable and powerful publishing platform in the world. So let's make this quick and fill this form. And my WordPress installation is done. Now I will log in with my login and I am in. Unfortunately, I don't see CSS styles. Design is messed up, so I will try to figure out what's going on. Okay, I'm logged in to my WordPress installation and now you see how it looks like if all the CSS styles are loading as intended. And the only change I made was that I tried to load my website with Chrome instead of Safari. And I think the Safari purposely blocks some of the styles and resources that are not protected with HTTPS. And in this case, my whole website is not protected with HTTPS protocol. It is just HTTP and I think Safari just blocks some of the files while Chrome is much more open-minded and I think I will continue my development using Chrome. So I will end this video saying that developing a WordPress website on Macbook is quite difficult if you choose an unusual technical stack such as using Nginx as your primary server with Apache as a proxy server or vice versa, I'm not sure right now, together with MySQL and HTTPD PHP. Instead, if I just went with the easy route, which means installing the MAMP stack, then I would not face so many issues along the way. So that's my tip for you. If you are developing on MacBook, definitely go the easy route. Don't try to simulate your VPS setup and just use the easiest solution out there so you can start the developing right away and not having to troubleshoot the DevOps issues that might take days to solve. So in the next video, I will try to install WooCommerce to my WordPress installation. And I'm really excited to finally start working on the e-commerce store based on WordPress and WooCommerce. So thank you for watching and for following me on my journey. If you want to support this channel, then like this video, comment below what's your WordPress tech stack and see you in the next video.